And on Ravelry, we also have a Ravelry group. So please do head over there and join in. You'll be in great company. And there are various different discussion threads, and that's also where we hold knit alongs and craft alongs and the like. I'm really glad to be recording this podcast vlog chat with you guys this week. I've just got back from a long weekend away visiting friends out of town which was absolutely lovely. And then I had to stay at home um, because of various different um, work people that were coming around to do jobs around the flat. So I thought that um, <laughs> since my workday was already quite disrupted, I might as well just carry on and do things that make me happy and record another podcast episode for you guys. So I'm sitting here with a warm cup of tea, which is quite unusual for me. Uh, I'm not sure if you can uh, glimpse the steam coming off it and ready to chat about various things. So before I get into this week's chat, I just wanted to remind any of you who um, are new to the channel, maybe you've found me via my recent guest appearance on my friend Ellie Skandia's podcast. Um, I have a monthly newsletter that goes out at the beginning of every month. Um, so the next edition will be probably on the 2nd of September. So just do head over into the down bar here on YouTube and find the sign up link and please do sign up for my newsletter if you haven't done so already. Um, I've decided that when I release any new knitting patterns or any products in the future, the newsletter subscribers are going to get the first and the most significant discount available. So there's a little incentive for you guys there. And also it's just another place to catch up with me if you enjoy um, my words, if you enjoy my my photographs and images and sort of scenes from around my flat you get a little bit more of an exclusive peek in the newsletter than you would on YouTube. So let's just get straight into it. This week I have got a little bit of knitting, a little bit of mending as usual and in conversational threads I am going to talk about the Crimson Whip Along which will be the next Make Along initiative run through the Crimson Stitchery so do stay tuned for information about that. So let's take a look at what's in my knitting basket and since last episode where I was rather lamenting about you know the heat of the summer being too hot to work on wool and then also my disastrous pile of whips or works in progress that was beginning to mount up and sort of feeling a little bit suffocating I did actually manage to cast a few things off um, so we had a couple of cooler mornings here in London, I've been travelling um, and I just decided to, you know, refocus my energy a little bit. So the first thing I've got to show you, rather excitingly, on a pair of sock blockers, which was a recent birthday gift from my pal Ellie Skandia, so here we go Ellie, they're in action, um, is a pair of these coral coloured hand knit plain vanilla socks. And these are a gift, and I did show them off on the last episode as well. And they're knit out of a blue faced Leicester tweed yarn, the main body of which didn't have any nylon. So I knit in the toes and the heel flap and short row heel using a blue faced Leicester yarn that did contain nylon. So it's the kind of thing that I think most people probably wouldn't really notice the difference. Um, so I think that that's worked out quite well given that the shades of colours are pretty consistent across. Um, the main body of the sock is knit using Spectrum fi Fibres, which um, is a tweed blue face Leicester yarn. I didn't, it didn't come up on the Ravelry database, but you know, I bought it. <laughs> and then the contrast heel is Stranded Dye Works in Koi which is one of those yarns that I ended up buying because I really liked the name um, and the idea of koi carp fish. So this pair of socks is a gift. I've knitted it for a, a relative of mine who lives in Singapore and um, hello if you're watching. And um, yeah, she just really, really wanted a pair of socks and she was extremely specific about the shade that she wanted. Um, she wanted coral or peach, but not pink. And yeah, it was surprisingly hard to find. There actually weren't that many options um, when I was out yarn shopping. 
but I think I found a pretty good one and hopefully because um, she lives in Singers um, I imagine that she'll wear these indoors and maybe if she's traveling somewhere with a colder climate so um, I was quite concerned about the fact that the blue face Lester didn't have any nylon in it despite the fact that yes it's a high twist yarn um, it's yeah and, it, and it's BFL which is is thought to be quite a strong fiber since the staples of the fiber are quite long but I was still worried because I've had quite bad experiences of knitwear wearing out and it, you know that's not a very nice thing if you give something to someone or rather you receive a hand knitted gift and then it, it starts to wear out I imagine it's not a very nice feeling so um yeah that's why I knit in the heels and the toes in the contrast yarn that did contain nylon um but you know <laughs> she's gonna get them and I'm sure she'll be very very happy with them so yeah that's one finished object off the needles and um yeah I was I was quite concerned about this whole Singapore climate thing to be honest with you because um yes it does get really really cold in the aircon but even so I didn't I didn't want these socks to be you know something that would just sit in a drawer because it, it wasn't really appropriate to wear them so I I made the cuffs quite short um so that they'll sort of be a little bit snuggly but not not too overpowering hopefully anyway <laughs> that's that I don't know why I'm getting so worried because she asked for them specifically so I'm sure it will go down very well so I did those and then the next thing that I finished are my birch ply socks which I'll just dangle in front of the camera like so I don't have a second pair of sock blockers um this is a pair of socks that I started much earlier on in the year, in the spring, and it's going to be the second pattern out of my Building Blocks sock collection, um, which is a collection of very intuitive and fun and relaxing sock patterns using stitches that feel really good to knit. So they're all gonna be knit and pearl combinations, no color work and possibly not any lace, but we'll see. So this is the second pair and I had the first pair done and um, most, of the sec most of the second sock too, all I had to do was do the heel and, and the foot. And I don't know what it was, I, I just put them down and I just couldn't bear to pick them up. So after last week's rant, <laughs> I forced myself to and like always, I don't know why I waited so long. The yarn is just a dream to work with. It's this Regia Premium Merino Yak yarn and I'll put I'll put some links to it down below so you can check it out the color is absolutely fantastic and the handle it's just so soft the yarn is so bouncy and squishy it was honestly a delight and um to be honest with you my sock drawer is full so when that's something that I had to I had to think about really um mine and my partner's sock drawers are both very very full at the moment and yet I would love to write and design more sock knitting patterns so I guess I could keep the samples as samples if I ever you know, need to have them on display somewhere. Um, or I could give them away as gifts, but this is, this is too good. <laughs> this just feels too good to give away. I think if I was gonna give it away, I'd have to buy a second pool of yarn and, and a different pair for someone because these have got to be for me. The color is fantastic. Um, and it, it's just it's just so soft and it was so lovely to work with. So more on these and on. I need to write up the pattern um, and also I've decided to write up the pattern in two possibly three different foot sizes different foot widths and the reason for that is that this stitch pattern isn't as flexible as others my red brick sock sock pattern I wrote with only one size and that was because the material created through that stitch pattern is extremely elastic and stretchy like it was very very noticeable to me so I decided just to release it as one and the response has been really great. I've loved seeing everybody's red brick socks and I do also feature reader knits in my monthly newsletter too every month so that has been an absolute joy just looking through the gallery every month and selecting um, someone's projects to feature and seeing what comes up. So please do um, you know log your projects on Ravelry and use the hashtags red brick socks and the crimson stitchery on Instagram if you use Instagram. So yeah, that's been totally delightful. But um, with the red brick socks pattern, which is, what has been so great has been reading the comments and seeing all of the modifications that people have been doing in order to get the perfect fit for them. 
And that really just filled me with so much confidence and just showed to me that um, it's really important for knitters to take ownership of knitting patterns. So sometimes people just leapt straight in and made their modifications immediately. And other times people just knit the pattern as I wrote it to see how it worked and ended up being very happy with it. You know, I've read a few comments that have said, oh, it wasn't my normal, you know, method in, in, in such and such a way, but I just had, a, I gave it a go and I'm, I'm really thrilled with how it turned out. I trusted the pattern. So that's been really fantastic. So I've loved hearing um, that side of things. Um, but for this pattern, I know that the stitch pattern won't stretch as far as the red brick socks pattern. It's not as elastic for various reasons um, that will, you know, become evident when you hopefully get to knit the socks. So yeah, I need to do some maths, some numbers and some calculations. I need to sit down at the computer and do that work. Um, and oh, I'm, I'm not quite sure when I'm, I'm going to get to do that. It will be some, sometime in the autumn. It will definitely be before the end of the year, but I can't make any promises about when this pattern will be released. But please know that I really want to release it and I'm so um, excited about working on knitting patterns for you guys once more. Um, yeah, <laughs> moving on from this, what else have I been knitting on? Quite a few things. Um, I cast off this coral pair of socks and then I needed something mindless to work on. So using the leftovers, I straight away cast on a second pair of coral socks. And this is also going to be a gift. It's gonna be a gift for my pal that has got really tiny, tiny little feet. And I'm definitely going to um, be able to knit two pairs of socks out of it. So that's that. They look quite a lot smaller than the original pair here, but um, yeah, they do still have some stretch in it. And obviously she's a different size. So it sort of looks like a mummy sock and a baby sock. <laughs> um, but yeah, so I started working on that and that was great travel knitting and, and great like when you know when you, you're with a group of people and you just end up waiting around for people to be ready to do things at different points so it's good to have something quite plain to work on then. And then the complete opposite to this sock project was this scrumpled up piece of knitting. Um, which is a piece of lace. And I was around my friend Ellie's house a couple of days last week um, to work on my PhD. And she was meant to work on her PhD. Um, and we just started talking about knitting because that's what happens when you're at Shea Ellie. And um, she'd knit a bunch of summer tops out of loads of different linen yarns, including this gorgeous burgundy Kalinka linen that I have had my eye on for absolutely ages. So when she mentioned that she had leftovers, I asked her if I could buy them off her as a de-stash. So I bought this um, ball of Kalinka linen from Ellie and, and a little bit more as well. And it doesn't look like very much now at all. And I chose a lace stitch pattern and I cast it on during my train ride up for my weekend away um, with stitch markers in between every repeat. So yeah, it doesn't look like much. But I wanted the time sitting on the train to spend focusing on the lace chart and working it up. And um, I, casting on is my least favourite part of knitting. I hate having all of the stitches when they're really tight after you've put them on the needle. I don't like stretching them out, especially when you're joining it to work in the round. I'm always super paranoid that it's going to be twisted. Fingers crossed, touch wood, I've never yet had them be twisted, probably because I get so paranoid about it and I check and recheck and recheck and recheck. So I find the first like four or five rows when I've joined in the round, especially in a pattern, um, to be quite consuming of energy and focus. So I did it when I was on this three hour train journey and then um, had to rip it out. <laughs> um, why did I have to rip it out? It wasn't because it was twisted. Oh, it's because I was following a Japanese lace knitting chart and I had photocopied the chart, but I hadn't photocopied the key and I'd made some assumptions about what the stitch patterns meant thinking that it would all be quite intuitive. But this was my first time working off a Japanese chart, so I really should have paid closer attention to the key because I basically mi mixed up 
some very basic stitches like garter and, and southern stitch and actually one of the key symbols was a little bit misleading too so it's not entirely my fault but um I just kept staring at the photo of the lace thinking that doesn't look right that doesn't look right that's not what I'm producing and eventually just gave in ripped it out and did it again so I had that um slightly stressful experience of uh casting on a lace pattern in the round twice so um, yeah, this is going to be a t-shirt. I'm I'm not sure what the fit's going to be like because uh, with this linen yarn and the casting on, casting off, and the lace, my my tension is is actively changing um, quite a lot. It's got quite a lot looser the more I've knit, um, and that's fine. And I expected that to be honest with you. With the lace, I expected it to open up, and I also expected the linen fabric itself to relax. So I erred on the side of caution and decided that I'd rather have a too tight t-shirt that would relax slightly than a really loose t-shirt that would get even bigger. And I think it's it's going to be a loose fitting thing, having cast on for what I thought would be a tight fitting thing, if that makes sense. Hopefully it does. Um, so yeah, I'm just going to knit this lace and then I'm going to think about shaping. <laughs> So that's the plan. And I would love this to be a pattern release. Um, realistically, we're going into autumn now. It would be for next spring, but um, we'll see. I spoke last week about um, having basic knitwear, or, or maybe it was the episode before, like basic t-shirts and basic colours, such as white, charcoal, grey, black, um, burgundy, and, and whatever other colours people have with their wardrobe staples. Um, for me, it's like, green turquoise red <laughs> it's not um beige lilac pink I don't I don't know well it is pink but I think all of my basics are really strong dual colors basically um and kind of neutrals that make the dual colors pop so creams and whites and blacks so that it enhances color <laughs> but I am really really big into clashing and overlapping colors as well I just love color so yeah, for me, burgundy dark red is definitely a wardrobe staple kind of colour. Um, yeah, <laughs> I feel like that's a lot of chat about not very much knitting, but I really enjoyed knitting the lace chart. It is just the kind of thing that I love to do, but I just have not had the brain space to work on that at all lately, which I'll get into a bit more in conversational threads. So it's a nice opportunity to work on this one on the train and also I've got various workmen coming in this week so while I, I'll struggle to do any like focused intellectual work um, for university while people are in and out of the building but I can probably knit on a lace chart so yeah that's that. My last knitting project that I'm going to show off is living in this make bag. And that is my magnolia jumper. So, <laughs> I finished knitting on my last sleeve. It's almost done. So, um, this last sleeve of this jumper just took absolutely ages to do, which I feel like is often the case. Um, partly because I had to knit it twice due to making a mistake in the lace chart. Um, actually, it wasn't a mistake, I just forgot to put some decreases in, I think, in the right place. So, um, at one point the numbers weren't adding up and I did that classic thing where you just keep ignoring it and keep going, hoping that it will work itself out until you realise that you're like 10 rows in and it's never got worked out and the mistake has just started shifting round in a spiral. So yeah, had to knit the sleeve twice, but again, in the end, I just put on some box set or so and, and just knit through it, forced myself to, and it's finished. So um, I'm not wearing it for a couple of reasons. Firstly, because it's far too warm. This is now 100% wool holst super soft yarn. And the other reason is um, I'm not considering this a finished project because I have to firstly weave in the ends of which there are hardly any, because I knit the sweater using a cone of yarn rather than individual balls. Amazing, highly recommend. Um, but also because I'm going to film the third part in my Holst Super Soft tutorial series, of which I filmed videos one and two a couple of months ago. And I want to film episode three, part three of this. So I'm going to be answering questions, um, any remaining questions that have been raised since I released the first couple of um, videos. And also I'll be machine washing this and 
just filming what happens and, and the process of that. Um, I've had really great feedback from viewers about these videos saying that it's given them a lot of confidence and it's answered questions that they had about using Holst yarns but also just generally um, yarns that contain spinning oil. So that's been really fantastic to hear and I'm really glad to have been able to provide that support. Um, doing sort of demonstrations and tutorials is something that I'd really like to do a bit more of on the Crimson Stitchery and I released my button tutorial last week too. Um, it's it's very in depth. <laughs> I've got a lot to say about sewing on buttons so please don't be put off by the length. I think it's 19 minutes. Um, you know you can stop and start it and dip in and out so there's a link on screen for that now um, and also below here in the video down bar. So yeah, um, if you've got any last burning questions about knitting um, with Hull Super Soft and the process of washing out spinning oil please do pop them in the comments of this video now. Um, Obviously do do go back and watch the other videos just, just to double check that your query hasn't been covered there. But people have um, raised things about memory and elasticity retention. Memory um, and also the um, the process of, of working with Holst yarn held double so I can cover that. Um, yeah, let me know. So yeah, not classing this as a finished object because I need to do something else in order, you know, for this as a project, which is make the video for you guys. So yeah. All right, let's put that back in the bag for now and go to mending. So I've continued being really good at mending. Um, this pair of olive green culottes, the um, hooks and bars at the back were falling off. Um, at this point, any original stitching um, from when I acquired the culottes has, has come loose and my stitching is still really strong. So really what I should have done um, was unpick everything and just re-sew it all on myself, but who's got the time to do that? Not me. So just a quick repair here and there. Um, and that used buttonhole stitch. So I have had a few requests about um, different types of stitches and um, I'm trying to decide whether I should film tutorials for um, certain stitches in an isolated manner or putting it more into a package in terms of like, you know, I could say how to do buttonhole stitch or I could say how to sew a trouser hook on which would teach you how to use buttonhole stitch in a particular circumstance um, or possibly do both. It, it, it might, yeah, it might work out that I do both both ways anyway but I'm sort of trying to think about that and also trying to think about the best setup for tutorials because um, this is my home. <laughs> I don't have like a studio workspace. Um, my button tutorial was filmed on my kitchen table <laughs> and I do most of my crafting on the sofa here these days because um, yeah I, sh I share a small flat with a man. <laughs> um, my, my other half we don't have um, you know, a separate desk. We just share the desk. We we share, we share everything. It's a small flat. We live in we live in London. So yeah, still trying to figure that out. Um, so yeah, I did these, and then I sewed another button on this um, embroidered lace blouse, which um, I've got two of these blouses. So again, again the same the same issue as this these trousers. Like I've got two of these blouses, and the same issue happened with both of them which is that the cuff buttons fell off and I, I had to replace them so I did one last time and then here's the other one um, so I sewed that on um, so yeah check out my button tutorial for much more hot info about button sewing technique and then the last thing to show you guys is this pair of plum trousers which um, it's quite a few years old now bought them when I was a different dress size <laughs> <laughs> um, gosh, probably like nine years old coming up to, so that's a fairly long amount of time. I think it's acceptable to have grown dress size since then, it's been a teenager, come on. So yeah, what what did I have to do? So I had to sew on a button that had popped off because of my love of food. <laughs> and um, actually let me show you this because 
This button I sewed on myself. I'm not sure if you can see if it's blowing out, but I've sewed it on with this cross across the thread. So that was my very, very strong button sewing technique that I demonstrated in my tutorial. And this one was sewn on by a sewing machine. Um, and this one was, you know, the, the button that came with the pair of trousers. And, you know, there's less thread and it's literally a sewing machine needle going duh, 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 across, jumping across to the hole and then like sewing um, vertically down there. So there's, there's no shank basically, which is what I talk about in detail in my video, um, whereas the one that I've sewn does have a shank. So because it had no shank, um, there was a lot more strain placed on the button essentially. So yeah, sewed on the button that popped off and then the top button I moved across. You can just about get a sense. I moved across, oof, what was it, half an inch, three quarters of an inch. Um, to give me a bit more room. Then I let it out in the bum. So I haven't ironed it yet, but you can see that was the original centre back. I opened it up and then stitched a new line so I've got a bit more room and then took it down into the seat. Um, so luckily this pair of trousers had quite a bit of seam allowance in it. So you can see again, that's the original line and I added in, what is that, an inch at the waist and then tapered it all the way down. Um, so yeah, that was very effective. Um, not that much ready-made clothing has got very much seam allowances in it. Um, so for example, on the side seam, of the trousers, there's absolutely nothing. It's just all been overlocked away. But luckily there was some in the centre back. So I could add more room there. Um, yeah, that's the great thing about making your own clothing too, because you can make it with bigger seam allowances to adjust for fluctuation in size and weight distribution. Um, so yeah, centre back, moved the button, sewed on a new button. Oh, and at the bottom, this classic tear that happens to all my trousers because I like to cycle and I don't like wearing cyclist clothing. Um, but I do have a road bike which doesn't have a very good chain guard. So loose fabric can just slowly migrate into the derailleur um, and just get completely stuck and ripped. And that happens quite a lot. Um, yeah, I could probably do with um, like an elastic band around my trouser leg or something just to hold it higher up, the fabric, so it doesn't dangle down. But um, I've got a bit of a love-hate relationship with my bike. Let's leave it at that. But anyway, so the classic tear in the hem from where it got caught in the derailleur and I just found a piece of purple bias binding in my fabric stash and just popped it round. It looks very shiny here, but um, yeah, that I just put it around there to patch it. Honestly, it's the kind of thing that you will, you're not gonna notice. You're not gonna notice. So yeah, these now need a really good um, iron. <laughs> I didn't press it because I wanted to be able to show you guys the, um, you know, where I'd let it out and the alteration and such. So they need a really good iron. They could do with a de-pill, a de-bobble because they are, um, yeah, they're pretty old, I think we've established. And yeah, they'll be good to go for the autumn. Really nice plum autumnal colour. These trousers have seen me, seen me through quite a lot actually. Um, quite a lot of different situations, but um, they are looking a little bit worn. I think a deep pill would really um, perk them up. So yeah, that's my mending. <laughs> okay. Conversational threads. So this episode on conversational threads, um, I'm going to talk about the whip along, which we discussed last episode and in the comments, which is brilliant. And then at the end of the episode, I'm going to just make a couple of announcements about Crimson Stitchery. So hold on for that. So the whip along. Thanks so much to everybody who gave some feedback and responded to that idea. Hooray! Let's do it. The Crimson Whip Along. So this is how it's going to work and disclaimer I am making this up as I'm going along. 
Um, so the Crimson Whiplum, it's going to happen um, here on YouTube, but with most discussion and um, like photographic participation happening over in the Crimson Stitchery Ravelry group. So don't forget to hop over there and join. Um, it's possible to post in the group without being a member, but um, in order to win prizes and you know stay up to date and everything, um, you have to be a member. So don't miss out. Don't forget to hit the join button. It's quick and free. Um, it can also happen on Instagram. I'm currently on an Instagram break. Um, I was going to save this to the end, but I'll just I'll just mention it now since we're on the on the subject. I just decided to stop using it. Um, I'd already decided to stop using it to document knitting, um, stop using like active knitting hashtags and not joining in on knit alongs on Instagram and just doing it on Ravelry. Um, and I spoke about that several times in the last couple of episodes. And again, people have been very understanding and supportive of that. Um, it's kind of difficult because so many people use Instagram basically and at the same time it sort of feels like this self-perpetuating cycle like if you say that you want to leave Instagram but you feel like you can't because you keep interacting with people on Instagram then you're going to keep using it because that's the medium to interact with. So um, I would say for me the best way to um, interact with me is you know here on YouTube, leave me a comment, um, watch my videos, um, post in the Ravelry thread because then it's a great way of talking to more people rather than just doing a back and forth and it's sort of um, it can be it can be quite personal too because you can go and look at all of their their project history and and you probably have quite a lot in common to be honest um especially if you watch the same podcasts um so i feel like ravelry is quite good for connecting people in terms of community whereas i've always found instagram very individualistic um and where else oh if you want to chat with me then send me a message on Ravelry um sometimes I'm quite slow to respond it's because I've got quite a lot on to be honest with you um but if you want to get in touch with me about a potential collaboration or a, an inquiry about the channel or anything like that the best way is to send me an email to the crimson stitchery at gmail.com um yeah. <laughs> so what was I saying? Oh yeah, so I'm not going to be taking part on Instagram at this moment in time. That might change in the future, who knows. Um, but I'm not using Instagram and honestly it has felt so liberating. Just not constantly flicking on the app just to look at stuff and I'd already turned off most notifications apart from messages but um, and yeah, I'd, I'd cut down the usage. I wasn't looking at it for knitting. So I was looking at it for like um, nature, uh, home inspiration, information about foraging, um, my friends, the outdoors, travel, other interests. I, I was still following tons of, of knitters and that was still really, really nice. But um, I just decided to turn it off and honestly, I haven't missed it. It's, it's just as simple as that really. Um, I got curious about five days in and checked it on my desktop on my computer and I was kind of like oh that's that all right I'll look at something else now and it wasn't a very big deal so um I am really excited to continue growing the Crimson Stitchery this is very much a side kind of side 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 gig because I've, I've yeah I do loads of different things um and so it, it might be necessary to get back on it in the future in order to connect with knitters but for the moment I'm really keen to continue exploring different ways of making connections through YouTube, through my newsletter and over on Ravelry. Okay sorry that that took so long but that's to say if you want to do it on Instagram the hashtag will be Crimson Whip Along and you can use that on Ravelry too so Crimson Whip Along, Ravelry, YouTube, Instagram, wherever it uses hashtags. So the way to partake in the knit along, oh dear, I just put my cup of tea down way too enthusiastically and got a cactus needle in my finger. Okay, so this is how the Crimson Whip Along is going to work. Um, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna go through <laughs> this massive pile, which quite a lot of is even out of camera. <laughs> Ah, which is of all of my whips that I've managed to find. All of my whips. Um, so that 
Oh, I think that was not such a good idea. But anyway, here we are. I'm now pinned into this little corner of the sofa by knitting. Um, and then in Ravelry, in the Ravelry group, there will be a thread. So, thread for the Crimson Whip Along. So the idea is that we go through all of our whips. That means <laughs> poking into the backs of drawers, going to the bottom of boxes, whatever that means. I've done it, I feel a bit sick, let's be honest. Um, and making a list of our whips. Taking a look at that list and trying our best to commit to finishing half of what's on the list, 50%. So, um, is it a whip if all you have to do is sew in the ends? Hmm. Probably depends on how many ends you've got. <laughs> if you've got 500, then I would say yes, that does count. If you've got one, then that probably doesn't count. So yeah, it's about things that are, um, things that are still unfinished so that we can work on working through them together, trying our best to commit to finishing half of them by the 2nd of January, the 2nd of January. So that gives us to mid-September, October, November, December, four and a half months. Now, I don't know whether people are doing holiday season knitting, festive season knitting. I am I'm very up and down about whether I knit for other people. Um, obviously in this episode, I've got two things that are for other people. Um, and I can, actually I can already see looking at my, my whip pal that I've got some stuff for other people. It might be that, for example, you find that you've, you've got like six individual socks and you want to knit their pairs, or you've got like five unfinished shawls, because you know, it happens, and you might want to finish them off and then realise that you don't need an extra six pairs of socks and five shawls in your life. Everyone's different. So it might be that maybe some of your whips could end up being um, gift knitting. So um, yeah, I just wanted to bring that up because I realised that that kind of goes into that gift knitting period, but not everyone does gift knitting and, and let's just see how it goes. And I think it's quite um, exciting to think that you could we could go into the new year and then like this stack of embarrassing, for me, half finished projects would actually be transformed into a big pile of finished stuff. Um, I'm, I'm debating whether there would be um, a finished objects thread or not, but I think that the focus of it would be kind of community spirit and getting into things together. And as to prizes, I've got a few things in mind, but if you would like to donate a prize, please do get in touch with me via email, thecrimsonstitchery at gmail.com, and I would love to chat to you further. Um, whether you are um, a yarn company um, or you know you create any kind of products for craft or I'm wondering if anybody wants to do a kind of pay it forward kind of thing um, whereby you might have something in your home that you feel like somebody else might enjoy more um, and you'd just like to donate a prize um, towards the Crimson Stitchery initiative in that way let's chat about it further Okay, so yeah, the aim is just to go through your whips, make a list and commit to finishing 50% minimum by the 2nd of January. Okay, without any further ado, let's look at my whips. So um, let's start with what you've already seen. So we've got half of one sock, number one. Okay, not too bad. I can probably crank that out quite easily. Let's put it on me until I get covered in whips. Right, half of one sock, so one and a half socks. I've got a linen top. No idea when that's gonna be finished because it requires using my brain. And yeah, that's quite difficult at the moment. <laughs> um, those are done. These, these, need, these are missing a pattern. <laughs> <laughs> these socks are missing a pattern and also as part of that pattern I want to continue in the theme of um, offering a pattern in different weights of sock yarn so these need um, a sibling a heavier weight sibling so I think oh, that does count as a whip for me um, because it's a project oh 
while I'm on that subject, what counts as a whip? It could be any craft. Um, it could be knitting, crochet, a combination. Uh, you know, it's really whatever floats your, bo your boat. Um, embroidery, it could be a mending pile. It could be sewing, quilting. Um, personally, I'm going to focus on knitting because I do have some half finished sewing projects and mending to get on with, but I really feel the need to clear my knitting cobwebs. Um, but it's entirely up to you, whether you're a multi-crafter like me and you want to just focus on one area, or if you just actually want to really go for it and bam, just list everything out and get rid of it all. Um, yeah, that's up to you. Okay, so that's three already. Um, okay, so then we might as well include the Magnolia jumper because I need to finish um, sewing on the ends and I need to film the video for you guys. So for me that is a project um, because, you know, the Crimson Stitchery is a project <laughs> itself, like the video channel for me that's a project. Okay, oh, hiding in this bag is a couple of sleeves. Haven't looked at these in a little while. Um, so that goes with this. This is my Caterpillar jumper which is a stripy leftover jumper. I've done two sleeves and I've cast on the back and um, it, it looks like a really wriggly caterpillar because um, the tension keeps changing because I'm using scrap yarn. But that's definitely gonna be a good one for, um, you know, chilly evenings at home through the autumn and winter. And it's fun and bright, so that will be a good one. Okay, right, I'm starting to get pinned in by knitting as expected. What else have we got? Ah. We've got this massive swatch that I showed you guys ages ago, um, which will be a hat for my grandma. And the reason that I never knitted it up was because I couldn't choose between the two stitch patterns. And I'm now wondering if I should just do plain stockinette. But I need to hurry up with that because her birthday is in, ooh, a week. <laughs> okay, right, we'll see how that goes. Um, not not hugely urgent to wear a 100% wool hat in August, so um, yeah, we'll see how that goes. Um, what else is there? Oh my goodness, there's a crochet flannel um, of which I'm crocheting an edging. Uh, so I've gone round half of the flannel, face flannel, and I just need to go around the last two edges that shouldn't take too long I think the issue is that I've lost the crochet hook um but you know who knows by the time I've emptied this knitting basket um <laughs> might have found it again so there's that that won't take too long but that's definitely achievable and mindless what else have I got in here uh oh I've got a mitten on which I appliqued a separate knitted heart so um and, and it's gone a bit wonky, so I think the idea was to do something about that, but um, looking at it now, where's the pair? Here's the pair. Looking at it now, oh yeah, it's kind of, I don't know. Oh yeah, because they're sort of both going off at the same angle, jaunty, rather than like going in. But looking at it now, I don't think I really care. They're quite cute. So that's something less actually, <laughs> that's quite good. Decided that that doesn't need to be a whip at all. Oh, who cares? I'm just gonna keep them. They're really hot they sort of feel like oven gloves. Hooray, not a whip. Um, a weird secret FO. I never actually wear mittens. At one point I thought I was gonna collect them, but um, from like Eastern European countries, I bought a pair from Latvia, I bought a pair from Estonia, a pair in, and a pair in Stockholm as well. Um, and I was gonna knit some, and then I just realized that I love the idea of mittens, but I hate wearing them because I feel really incapacitated. Um, not, I'm, I'm like just really restricted by them because I always, I move around quite a lot anyway. I'm now boiling, so these might be a Christmas gift for someone. Anyway, so that was those. Oh, that's quite handy, isn't it? That can go on the other side because that's finished. They can go on the other side because they're finished. What else is in here? Oh, I cast on a cowl for cycling in the autumn. 
and I only got as far as the ribbing because I had to knit the stitch pattern and use my brain. Are you, are you seeing a theme? Um, yeah, there's just been too much going on up here. And so when it comes to knitting, I just, I just couldn't cope. I just couldn't cope. But um, now it's going to be autumn. This is a lovely, like, damson, damson kind of burgundy purple colour. And um, yeah, it's the right time to have a knitted cowl. Better, better hurry up with that. Okay, right. Let's add it to the pile on top of me. What else have we got? Ah, we've got this black vest top that you guys have seen. Um, so this is the front of it. And so it's got up to about the bust. So I need to do up the shoulders and then do the other side. Gosh, this is already feeling really big. Um, <laughs> I'm really starting to feel a bit anxious about this, to be honest. Um, black vest top. Arguably, I can sort of sense uh, a, an order of what I should do things in as well. Like, I should do the grandma's hat first, then I should crack on with the vest top while it's still quite warm. Um, then I should do the jumper magnolia so that I can do the video for you guys. Um, yeah. And then the sock for my friend is not a priority because her birthday is not till next February, but I'm just doing that because it's easy. So I think basically I, I just, I've needed to do things that are easy and anything difficult just keeps getting put aside and put aside and put aside. And now it's, it's just piling up way too much. Um, okay, what's next? Oh, I've got this bag here um, full, of, full of yarn. Um, and a swatch that went with that, that I've showed you guys before actually. And I've got a cast on, but it's literally just a cast on because I think I changed my mind about the proportions. So that can just be ripped out. And actually, as part of the whip along, you are allowed to rip things out. That's perfectly acceptable if you decide that you're just not gonna finish it. Um, so for me that's not a very big deal because I literally just cast it on and decided I think I either wanted it bigger or smaller. Can't even remember. Um, so I need to sort that out. Um, oh, we're finally, finally getting to the end. That's quite good. Right, I'm going to have to get this off me because I'm literally being suffocated by knitting, which was my own silly fault. Um, oh my gosh. So honestly, this is like, this is way too much because normally I have a sweater and a pair of socks on the needles. And if I have something hard, like lace or, or cables, I'll also have something easy, like stockinette. But I've got like way too many half-baked ideas, um, basically. The last two things I've got to show you are my longest standing whips. Um, this one is a sock. I believe I started it last summer toe up, which is not my current favourite construction, and a pretty complicated cable pattern from a back issue of Pom Pom in bright, bright, bright red. And I've wanted a bright red cosy pair of socks for um, Yule, the Christmas period, for absolutely ages. Um, but something about knitting this has been really difficult. It's a chart, I'm not really enjoying it. The counting you know, within the chart doesn't feel very intuitive. I got so confused by it, I actually knit it too long for my foot, if I check. Yeah, I mean, it's not even on my foot yet and it's already half an inch too big and so that doesn't have any negative ease. Um, oh, it sort of feels a bit heartbreaking but I'm tempted to rip this out. I don't know if it's worth the effort of forcing myself to continue up through the body of the sock up the leg. Um, I could rip it out and design something myself with a much more fun stitch pattern. I'm tempted to rip this out. This feels like a really big deal to me. I rarely just like give up on things. I'm, I'm a finisher at some point um, of my life. Like, yeah, let's not get too meditative about that. I might rip that out. Um, I feel, it feels quite nice to have admitted that to myself. And then, okay, so the last thing is like even older. It's two years old, I think, or a year and a half. Um, and it is a jumper, a really fuzzy, lovely polar bear kind of jumper. 
And look, I've got loads of parts to it. That's the back. This is the front. Cream, really cozy. So it's got this massive, um, like dipped and, and split hem. I should add that this is something that I'm designing myself. Or I was designing myself. Um, yeah, big split hem. Is that it? I thought I might have some sleeves as well. Yeah, that looks like it, those two bits. And um, it was gonna be um, some sort of bottom up raglan and it seemed because of the split hem at the side and also to have like interesting exposed seeming details up the raglans and then like a big fold over turtleneck kind of thing um yeah that was super easy uh, but again i stopped because i had to do some measurements and calculations so following the theme of having to use my brain and stopping so this is like probably it's at least a quarter of a jumper. It doesn't have sleeves or the upper part of the body. So one, two, three, and then the cowl. Yeah, it's about a quarter of a jumper. Um, so yeah, I feel really warm <laughs> and buried in knitting. So the next thing for me to do is to list all of this out, which, which will be ready for you guys in the Ravel rethread by the time that this video is um, released. Gosh, I feel like quite exhausted by that effort. <laughs> that wasn't very fun for me, guys. Um, you know, for the kind of girl that has like two, maximum three, maybe four if we're talking like, you know, like an old hanging around project on the needles. Like this is, this is just way too much. And I'm gonna try and I'm gonna finish it off, I'm gonna do it. Okay, so make a list, um, commit to finishing some of it off and just get going, post in the Ravelry thread, use the hashtag <laughs> Crimson Whiff Along. Um, if you have any thoughts about participation prizes and anything like that, please do drop me a line. Okay, so <laughs> let's start to wrap up. Um, I want to start by reminding you guys about my monthly newsletter. Don't forget to sign up. There will be discounts in the future of the newsletter and I really don't want you guys to miss out. So that's definitely the first port of call for Crimson announcements. Um, that's number one. Um, number two, a big thank you to everybody who has bought me a coffee over on Kofi.com which if you're not aware is a donation platform which allows you to support content creators, YouTubers, um, by buying them a coffee through PayPal. So thank you so much. That has been really lovely of you and I really, really appreciate your support. I have a small announcement to make, which is that I've decided to take the rest of this month off YouTube. So I will not be releasing any new videos until the beginning of September, where you'll also get my latest newsletter edition once you've signed up. And the reason for that is just to give myself a bit of a summer break. Um, I've had a super busy spring, which regular viewers will know all about, because I've mentioned that many times, and making videos through that period has actually been a way of keeping me grounded and helping me feel sane. But I've got some deadlines coming up. I really, really need to focus on working on my PhD thesis and doing some research. And also summer is a very quiet period on the internet. Um, people are away doing different kinds of activities. Um, the knitting mm, world publicly is, is fairly quiet as well. I guess pe some people knit less um, during the summer or people have got various different childcare responsibilities. So things have felt really quiet here on YouTube. Um, and I think that it's healthy for me to re reflect and respond to that and take a little bit of a break myself. So um, do have a look through my back catalogue of videos if you haven't done already. If you go to the main kind of profile page for the Crimson Citry on YouTube, um, youtube.com forward slash c forward slash the Crimson Citry, you will have access to all of my videos, the whole the whole shebang, and also I do 
put every single video into a playlist. So I've got, you know, knitting podcast playlist, um, my tutorials playlist, which is growing. And also there are different kind of special episodes that if you're a new viewer, you might not have seen yet. So do feel free to dip back in the history of the Crimson Stitchery if you've been missing me. However, don't worry about me. I will be sitting on my sofa working through this horrendous mountain of knitting. I will be reading all of your comments. I will be hopefully reading some novels and just creative writing. I will be working on my thesis, an important thing to do. Um, and just, yeah, just, just taking a little bit of pressure off, off YouTube. Um, I had so many ideas of things that I wanted to make for the Crimson Stitchery, product ideas, knitting patterns, different initiatives, honestly, like so much. And my mind is just awake with all of that, but there's just gets to a certain point where you have to know your limits and you have to decide what to focus on. And I really need to put some time um, into doing writing and research for my thesis. So that's what I'm gonna spend the next four weeks really focusing on and taking a little bit of time off YouTube, but I will be on Ravelry and just around on the internet generally. So thank you so much for joining me in the Crimson Stitchery this episode. I love having you here. Thank you and hello to all of my returning and regular viewers. Some of you have supported me right from the beginning um, in February. Um, if you're looking for something different to watch, um, do check out my guest appearance over on Skein Deer Knits. Again, links in the down bar here. We have a very, very in-depth technical conversation about fit and writing knitting patterns and so on and so forth, um, which is what Ellie's podcast is great for. My podcast is great for me rambling and looking at pretty things. <laughs> but um, yeah, I hope that you are all well, safe and happy, and I will definitely speak to you and see you soon. Take care and happy knitting. Bye-bye.